All right, let's go ahead and get started with article one. We're gonna be talking about an electric nose. So you might be thinking, why electric nose? Well, I'm gonna tell you, Dan. Um, pharmaceutical sector is really interested in differentiating between the different kinds of mint. And the reason they do that is because mint is actually like a bio herbicide. Now the government okay. has very strict regulations about um, what kind of mint is used for what. So right now the process of separating them is laborious, it's time consuming, it's not efficient generally. So automating it would be great. This is where, and I think I'm going to butcher this university's name. I am so sorry. Um, Carl's Rue Institute of Technology, just calling them KIT from here on out, comes into play with their electric nose. They've set up a system where, you know, instead of us human beings using our olfactory bulb sensors to sense what's going on and relaying it to our brain, they're using electronic sensors to relay, relay that information to a computer. Okay. So you said you've got the electronic analogy mm -hmm. of us with our olfactory sensors and the brain, what components are they using? Specifically, what I'm interested in is like, you know, the, the, the nerves in our nose, the sniffers, what are they using for that in this electronic sense? That is a wonderful question. So they're actually using this very simple setup that has a quartz crystal and two electrodes. They're, the whole like um, sensor setup is 12 different sensors and they're called quartz crystal micro balance sensors. The way it works is that if you've ever worn like a, um, a normal quartz watch, it has a very specific resonance. So it's vibrating at a certain rate. Now, if it detects, if you put on like a scent of mint or a scent of anything, that resonance changes. And okay. the computer is able to backtrack and go, oh, well, this changes resonance is actually us detecting this scent. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, but you mentioned they're trying to... Um, differentiate between different types of mints. Is is that how they're distinguishing between them? Is different mints cre create different resonance changes in the quartz crystals? Yes. And the way they're able to identify like what scent did we just detect is by doing a lot of tests, gathering that data and feeding it into a ML al algorithm. So a machine learning algorithm okay. that knows how to differentiate between, you know, uh, spearmint and peppermint. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It seems like a lot of these sensors we've been talking about recently is like it collects a ton of data it gets a really clear picture of what's going on and ai or machine learning is the thing that pushes it over the goal line to exactly help distinguish between you know what specifically they're looking for they do all the hard work right the sensor just gather the data um yeah something to note here though um th this sensor is really interesting but as of right now every time you use it you have to wash it with carbon dioxide and then you got to leave it alone for 30 minutes to like reset and then you can reuse it. Well, it's like resetting your palate, like after eating something or like if you go to buy perfume or like a candle shop, usually they'll have like a, a common scent, like a coffee or something for you to sniff. Exactly. To reset between yeah. Each smell. So I imagine that's what they're doing here. I mean, I don't think carbon dioxide is interesting to smell, but yeah, it's, it's probably what they're doing. On, on a quick side note, honestly, every time I go to a candle shop, I think I enjoy sniffing the coffee more than I do the actual candle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love coffee, but Okay, so the, the reason I thought this topic was interesting was because obviously it has application in the pharmaceutical sector. There's no doubt about it. But there's this huge boom of like VR recently, right? Facebook is sinking a ton of money into the Oculus. It's, it's a hot topic. Everyone's going after it. And it seems like the last thing um, for us to have really, really good VR, the last sense that we're missing is smell. Like right now you can see um, with the new grippers they have, you can technically touch. But imagine watching like um, the Food Network with your VR glasses and you start smelling what they're cooking. Yeah, I, I cannot wait to smell what Binging with Babish is cooking oh. or Kenji Lopez Alt. I mean, man, oh, I think I get hungry already watching them. It, it would be terrible if I was allowed to smell the food as well. It's already an addiction and I find myself wanting to cook up whatever Andrew or Kenji are cooking up. And if this was to happen, oh God, my life would be dedicated to Food YouTube. <laughs> it, oh. and it's it's not just that right like imagine you're in new york right now for our listeners that don't know daniel's on a trip you're eating all this great food and imagine if we could facetime you could like put your phone to your food and i could join in on the fun right yeah well that's that's what i was thinking is like you know once you crack the code on how to replicate this smell for someone in vr or ar i was thinking about my girlfriend nelly and i have done long distance relationship for the last four years of college we've been you know countless evenings we spend on FaceTime, we order dinner together and have a dinner date on FaceTime. It'd be really cool if we could like 
have a more immersive experience in that virtual date. And like, I could smell the delicious chicken parm that she got from the Italian restaurants in Boston's North End. So you're absolutely yeah. right. And like, look again, we keep coming back to the whole COVID situation. That's like our new reality, but virtual everything has become the norm. You know, you're having virtual meetings with your coworkers, virtual dates. So this would be like such a fitting add on to like literally any virtual environment, at least in my opinion. Yeah.